afternoon and thanks for uh, the introduction Ranjit. Uh, so this webinar is going to be more on uh, online monitoring of slow rotating equipment. Um, when it comes down to uh, myself, I've done PhD in condition monitoring. I've been there with SKF for almost eight and a half years. Uh, and now we go through the presentation outline. So what we're going to be discussing in next uh, 45 minutes, the first part is going to be slow speed application scenarios. So we're going to go through some of the industry application scenarios and then we're gonna go through uh, online system design part. And the idea here is I would like to be as generic as possible uh, without basically going into any vendor specific system designs or any any particular features or anything on those lines. So let's just be generic on that front. Then the case studies. So I'll go through the slew bearing and then the grind mill. So these are the two case studies that we're gonna discuss in next uh, 45 minutes. So let's go into the industry challenge. So the industry challenge that I'm going to speak about uh, is basically more on the slewing bearing and then the horizontal grinding mill. So if we talk about a slew bearing uh, on a balance machine, the production of the machine is basically more on the lines of uh, uh, 10,000 tons per hour. And the slew bearing uh, lead time is significant as well. Uh, there is basically a bit of background noise. Maybe everybody switch off the microphone, please. Uh, then the iron ore price is basically $80 a ton. And the reason I put these statistics, fellows, is that I want to go through uh, how much commercially or commercial implication is when we monitor the slew bearing without having an online system, number one, and then we go through what is the impact that online system can offer. So the first part is let's try to understand what is the standard manual process. So the standard manual process is that they basically collect the data using dial indicators, which is more of a manual process. And it can take up to 12 hours to collect the data. And then basically it requires the exclusive control on the machine as well, which machines no other work can be done. If, if something is basically because they got to isolate and de-isolate the machine and lock on, lock off. So it's quite a cumbersome task. And then the data is collected under a very lab environment. So what I meant by unloaded conditions mean is collected in a very much like a lab environment, not in a production environment. Then the man machine interaction. So surely the guys have to basically go in the confined space and, and get to collect the data and then the reliability as well. So when it comes down to more of a standard in the industry, that's what is happening currently. Uh, in regards to monitor, monitoring the large slew bearing on the balance machines. By doing all of that, if I consider 12 hours and I consider the tonnage, we can all estimate that commercially it's a huge impact as well. Even though by investing all of that, I have got one case where I've got the data recorded using manual process. So though the image is not very clear, we can see some readings are 354 millimeter, some are basically 356 millimeter at the same position, and similarly on the other side as well. And I want to establish here that that challenge in regards to reliability for manual drop height is basically it's across the industry. There is no reliability in general to drive the decision based on the manual process manual process where people basically lock on, isolate the machine and go and collect data, then move the machine to a different angle, different angle, different angle. So that's that's basically the process involved. By investing all of, all of that, still the data is not reliable to predict the remaining life slash what is the uh, optimal time to replace the slew bearing slash how the performance of the slew bearing is. So now we kind of covered 
what is more of a challenge in the industry? Now I'm going to move to online condition monitoring part of the discussion, right? So when it is an online monitoring, surely, as we can all imagine, the philosophy here is that we should be collecting data without any man machine interaction. Uh, and that is basically how the system design should be, right? So then we move on to the operating conditions part of the uh, uh, machine. So if I talk about a reclaimer in a heavy mining industry or a stacker, we all know the machine is basically rotating uh, uh, through certain angles. Similarly, the loft position moves up and down as well, and the load condition changes as well, and the build on the machine changes as well. So all of these parameters, they basically cause a challenge that how we make sure that we collect the reliable data from an online condition monitoring system. Now, also another important parameter is the speed of the machine. So surely if the machine is moving, the, the, the speed changes as well, the direction changes as well. And then the process parameters uh, based on how the process is driving, how much energy is being operated, that can vary as well. So all of these operating conditions they give us a good challenge that how we optimize the condition monitoring system if it's an online system. So the idea here is that there shouldn't be any man-machine interaction. If there is no man-machine interaction and all of these parameters are changing, then we got to be making sure that we collect the data and we design the online monitoring system that we mitigate the impact of all of these operating conditions. That is basically a fundamental requirement. If we want to be successful in any condition monitoring practice, doesn't matter whether it's oil analysis, lubrication analysis, thermography, online monitoring, offline monitoring. If our operating conditions are not repeatable, the data will never be giving me enough insight to reliably predict the future. So. If I'm comparing the data within similar conditions, that then we can say that we're comparing apples with apples. That essentially means that I'm mitigating the impact of the operating conditions. So now we're going to go through the online system design, and we are all clear that the impact of the operating conditions should be managed. The reason I'm using the word managed we cannot say that only collect data when slew angle is 30 degree, left position is uh, two degrees, loads, uh, let's say 700 kilonewton, uh, direction is whatever. It has to be, there need to be some data analytic part be involved in it so that we can optimize the predictability from the data by collecting the data uh, in conjunction with the operating conditions. Now the next part is what parameters should we collect from a slew bearing, right? So if we consider the failure mode of a slew bearing, the failure modes are basically, uh, it could be uh, some uh, fatigue on the raceway, some subsurface, subsurface fatigue. It could be spalling, pitting, uh, that's what we've seen. Deflection is a very major cause of the failure of the slew bearing. So when it comes down to covering these failure modes, the idea is that we capture the overall wear on the slew bearing, number one, and then we also collect the vibration data to see how the roller movement is on the raceways. So if I talk about the overall wear, we can extracted from the manual process as well that we've got as an established process in the industry, we can use some gap monitoring sensor between the race phase. So that is basically the overall wear over a period of time can be predicted based on that. But what is the performance of the rolling elements as well as the race phase? That is going to be coming more when we basically look into the vibration monitoring. When it comes down to vibration monitoring, uh, depending upon how the transducers are basically mounted, the transfer function or the gain curve 
uh, with respect to frequency changes. But let's say we have basically got a stud mounted transducer, and then if I consider the normal or typical frequency response of a transducer and something running at 0 0.11445 RPM, certainly we won't be able to measure the vibration at that low particular frequency. So my counter argument is, what are we monitoring here? Certainly our underlying application is bearing. And when it comes down to bearing, the impacting is going to be going into a high frequency, resonant frequency, where the energy from the bearing or the impact energy from the bearing is going to be modulated in this band. So it doesn't matter, even if the low frequency cut of the transducer is higher than my running speed, but the carried energy or the modulated energy from the bearing is lying in the high frequency. So vibration is going to be effectively capturing the impact coming from the raceways. So when it comes down to deploying the technology, largely we're gonna focus on two aspects. One, measuring the overall gap between the raceways, which will be coming more from the drop height sensors. And then the second part is how is the overall damage of subsurfaces or uh, on the raceways that is going to come more from the vibration. Then I move on to basically the next part on the system design, right? And the idea here is that we will be basically looking to be as generic as possible. Uh, so the sensors that basically get integrated into an online system, the data can go to a server, and then there could be a team who's performing the data analytics, right? So that is an, a typical arrangement for an online system. Now I'm gonna talk about again on the slew bearing as an application. The online system should have the capability that we should be able to collect the data under exact same time stamps. So imagine if we are rotating, I, I move a little bit back so that you can see. So imagine if I rotate the machine by a certain angle and I try to swing the machine, then I should be able to correlate the data from one vibration sensor to the next vibration sensor to the next vibration sensor. So this is going to be the sensors installed on the raceway of the bearing. So the idea here is that if there is a certain part of the bearing has got some damage, when, when, some, when one sensor passes it, we see an impact. When the second sensor passes that location, we see another impact and so on and so forth. And once we correlate the data from multiple sensors installed on the slewing bearing, then we can basically predict what is the region on the raceway where the damage is happening. Now, similarly, when it comes down to monitoring the gap, we install the proximity sensors on the front and the rear part of the bearing. And the idea here is when they basically swing the machine, we capture the data throughout 360 degrees. But again, the catch here is, the most important part here is, doesn't matter whatever is the online system, we should be able to collect the data simultaneously from all the sensors so that we can relate the vibration from one part of the machine and, and try to estimate or predict the future health of the slew bearing. So that is more on the design part. Then we should be able to collect the data from the process as well. So when it comes down to integration of the data and the parameters that determine the actual dynamics of the machine that we discussed previously, for example, slew angle, loft position, load, direction, speed, all of these parameters, they basically change the operating conditions. We need to capture those parameters. It could be coming from the process control. We can install 
different senses to capture it as well. But the idea here is that when we basically look into an online system, it should have an adequate functionality that I should be able to sample the data from all the senses and all the parameters at the same time stamp to correlate the vibration from one part of the machine to the rest of the machine. All right, so now I'm gonna share some results here, right? So now if we talk about the initial kind of discussion that we established, the standard in the industry is that we capture the gap between the raceways using some manual process. Now, this is the data that we've collected on the raceways, but using an online system. So we can see here on the vertical axis, I've got the microns, but the image is surely not so great. But that's the vertical axis, I've got the microns. And then on the horizontal axis, I've got the timestamps. And that's basically the data captured at different position on the slewing bearing. So what we are doing again, the gap between the boom side of the machine and the counterweight side of the machine, we are monitoring the gap between the raceways and that is the data without any control signal in place. So it's basically, I'm ignoring the left position, I'm ignoring the slew angle, I'm ignoring the load. So this is the raw data without any data analytics. Now we map the same data onto a circular plot and we can see the smearing in the data. Though it is at the micron levels, and I can see the standard deviation in the data is basically 165.9 microns. It is still way, way uh, better result compared to what we had from the manual process, but still it is not adequate and we can filter it further to make sure that we collect the data under the same conditions. So I have referred the word data without gating signal, but essentially it means that on the entire 360 degree circumference of the slew bearing, that is basically the data that we have collected uh, under all the operating conditions. Now let's go to the next one. Now I have applied the gating conditions, right? And this is the data you can see basically over a period of almost one year, right? And now I have frozen my slew angle that my slew angle needs to be necessarily 90 degrees. What essentially it means that from the front of the machine to the back of the machine, we basically swing the machine at 90 degrees and it's going to happen all during the process, normal operation of the machine. And we just capture the data at 90 degrees of slew angle and left position. And now here we can see that my standard deviation in the data has reduced to 30 microns. And we can see that when we presented or went through the manual process, we saw that the peak to peak gap was basically almost two millimeter at the same position, which essentially means that we had a variation in the data stamps for more than 2000 microns. And now what we are talking here, the peak to peak gap variation is like the, the tolerance level is really, really low. And we can see it's basically to the level of only uh, 200 microns. And then we can see how at this particular position of the bearing, sorry, at this particular position of the laugh uh, and slew angle, what is my gap is progressing and I can predict how is the wear rate of the machine, which leads into the prognostic part of the slew bearing. Now, let's zoom in the same thing and then we can see basically over a period of one year, I can try to put a line here which 
essentially tells me that how the wear is happening on the sleeving bearing over a period of one year, how the gap between the raceways is changing. And here, what we are talking about, my vertical axis are microns. What essentially it means is, if basically we were talking here to the thinness of the hair, right? So that's why we can see some exaggerated values because my vertical axis is really, really zoomed in and we can see the overall wear over a period of the year. Now, let me go through another machine. This is basically a machine, the case that we discussed now, this is a machine which is basically going to be covering entire 360 degrees. Now let's go to another machine where we have basically got the machine which is operating only in one quadrant, right? And this machine only operates, it is a stacker actually, and the machine only operates in the 90 degrees. So this is the data which is basically on the boom side of the stacker, and that is the data on the counterweight side of the stacker. And we can correlate when the boom is going lower, the counterweight is lifting up and vice versa. But still, you can see at this, for example, at this particular angle, which is 50 degree, I can see there is a huge variation. So which reading should I trust? Should I trust this reading, which leads into uh, 3,300, or should I believe this reading, which leads into 3,000? So I, I don't know which one is right, right? But again, one thing that I discussed at the very beginning of this conversation, the idea here is that we haven't literally frozen the parameters. The data is collected at any uh, load and left position. Now, let us try to go further. And then we see once we freeze the process parameter and we try to collect data under similar conditions, and then we try to basically compare apples with apples. Let's see how the data looks like. So now this is the data that we we've frozen the operating conditions that my left position is basically from 13 to 14 degrees and my load is basically frozen as well. And I can clearly see a very uh, stable reading. And if I need to see how much is the gap between the raceways at 40 degrees, I can be very certain that it's 3,250 microns. And similar trend is basically on the counterweight side as well. Uh, certainly the readings cannot be completely matched because there is still deflection component which happens, but overall, when we talk about future predictability, we are talking at the microns level and it's looking quite healthy from that aspect. So again, to reiterate, two things that we need to achieve. One is we need to be considerate about the operating conditions. Second, we should be collecting data from all the sensors at the same time. So we have covered what is basically more of an industry standard when it comes down to slew bearing monitoring. So we have covered manual gap monitoring versus online gap monitoring. Now I'm gonna go further on the slew bearing monitoring, which is what is the result that I get from the accelerometer, the vibration transducers? What is the result that we get? Again, because even though machine is running at low speed, but we are interested in the healthiness of the bearing. So it is more important that we are interested in that modulated energy. Uh, that is more important for us to do the diagnostics on the sling bearing. So here is some here are some results, right? When it comes down to uh, uh, the 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 results from the vibration transducer, and that's the my horizontal axis is basically the frequency, and my vertical axis are the amplitude, which is envelope. Uh, that's what we use in SKF, but largely we we because we, we want to be generic. 
lastly, we can say that's the demodulated energy. So what we see here, the blue line is basically when the bearing is brand new and the green line is when the damage has happened on the bearing. And we can see the ball spin frequency and the harmonics of it very clearly, which means that when the rollers are rotating on the raceway, some impacting is happening. But that only the frequency domain analysis on such a slow speed application is not adequate. We need to look into the time waveform as well and try to see what we see from one sensor and then the next sensor moves the same position on the raceway and so on and so forth, we can replicate the same outcome. So let's go to the next plot. Again, frequency, but only thing is the blue line is at the front, the green line has moved back. Just to explain how is the relation between the new bearing and the worn bearing. Now, this is quite interesting. Now we've got the time waveform, right? So when it comes down to time waveform, the blue line that we can uh, barely see, which is hidden underneath the green line, is when the bearing is brand new bearing. And then the green line is indicative of when there is a wear on the bearing. And if we try to see the repetitive impacts coming from the rollers hitting on the raceway, and the gap between these impact is quite consistent, that is kind of an indication that there is a damage on the bearing, right? So that gives us in the time waveform, what we're seeing in the frequency domain is a real phenomena because we can see the impacting coming in in the time waveform as well. Now let's look into comparison from time domain perspective from a damaged bearing to a new bearing. So the blue line, which is at the front now, is the new uh, bearing, and the green line, which is, or the green uh, time waveform, which is in the background, that's when the damage has happened. And we can clearly see there is an impacting, repetitive impacting in the green line, and when it's a brand new bearing, we do not see any impacting coming on the raceway. Another spectrum again, uh, which is kind of indicative of the same phenomena. We can see the raceways frequencies coming in as well. And that is basically another one where we have basically put the blue ones on the top, the healthy bearing and the green one behind, which is the bad bearing uh, or the damaged bearing, I must say. Now let's look into how the bearing inspection, when, when the bearing was removed, uh, how the inspections look like. And we can clearly see the damage on the rollers and which is basically hitting the raceways. And it's pretty in a very, very bad condition as we can see. And there is a lot of contamination uh, as well where the grease sample becomes quite a challenge in, in, in the industry when there is so much contamination to, to predict what is happening in future. And that is more about my first case study, which is about the slewing bearing. And now we, uh, and these, that's basically more of the performance dashboard for the slew bearing that we can see. Uh, that is basically the way we do or conduct data analytics. We can see and plot the, uh, the gap of the wear across the entire 360 degree circumference. And we can see within which diet range, what conditions, how the data is looking on different part of the machine or different uh, angular positions of the machine. Same thing, uh, another visual of the performance dashboard. And why we need to do the performance dashboard? The fundamental reason is, us being condition monitoring experts slash driving the condition monitoring on site, we need to present the data in a way that we can drive in a simplistic way to the maintenance. And that is very, very important. We all know the challenge that we perceive in the industry. So dashboard is quite a very much visual scenario to see how is the performance of the machine. Now let's move a second case study, 
which is on the horizontal grinding mill. And again, I would like to be generic, but when it comes down to the grinding mill and depending upon uh, uh, the failure modes that we want to cover, or we, we would like to cover, the design of the system could integrate variety of transducers. It could be vibration, it could be load, it could be temperature, it could be uh, displacement, it could be motor torque, it could be like depending upon what failure modes we want to capture. And the whole idea again is uh, that I would like to re-emphasize that vibration data is absolutely very critical for us to predict the future health of the asset, but we always need to look into multiple avenues to be more certain what is causing the vibration, where they're coming from, and how we can basically relate it to the process as well. That's very, very important. So whatever system we pick up from the industry that should have the feature that we should be able to have integration with the process control. We should be able to capture data through multiple sensors as well. And again, one very important parameter when we want to do any uh, like phase analysis, we should be able to capture the data from multiple sensors at the same time. That is a very, very important thing that we need to be mindful when we uh, design the system to cover up the failure modes. Now I'm gonna go through a like couple of slides which are basically on how we see the uh, or pick up the failure from the tronian bearing, which is basically again a very slow speed application. But again, we will refer back to our initial discussion. If we want to pick up the bearing, we can still pick up use. If we want to pick up the bearing failure, we can still pick it up using vibration sensor, though the low frequency cutoff of the vibration sensor is lower than the running speed of the machine, but running speed has not anything to do with the modulated energy from the bearing, and that's what we are interested in to pick up the bearing failure. So now let's move on to a couple of very interesting uh, spectrums and time waveform, and we try to see how the data looks like. Now, in this case study or the data that I've got, this is just the overall values, right? So let's say I have mounted a transducer onto the trunnions of the grinding mill, and I can see this is the data coming through and the failure happened. When the failure happened, then the maintenance was conducted and then it's been running for a while. And then again, based on the production challenges slash uh, production requirement, it came back on and we can see, so this is when the machine failed and this is after the maintenance was conducted, right? Looking onto this overall value, and then looking into this change in the overall values, it does not tell me where the vibrations are coming from. Surely I can see there is a high vibration before the failure, and then it leads into maintenance. But can we predict what has caused for this high vibration? Then certainly we need to look into the spectrum and the time waveform. So let's have a look. Now that the blue line here is again when there is a fault on the mill and the green line is when it's a brand new bearing, right? And we can see the impacting in the time waveform is very much exaggerated when it's a damaged bearing versus when it is a brand new bearing. Now let's look into the spectrum, and this is more in the demodulated. The reason I'm not using envelope because this presentation is more for being generic. And I can see the spectrum. So on the horizontal axis, I can see the frequency, and on the vertical axis, I can see the modulated energy. And then I can see the fundamental harmonic of the outer rays of the bearing and then the harmonic series as well, which is kind of indicating me uh, how bad is the bearing. More the harmonics, generally, uh, if 
we see a lot of harmonics. It means the impacting is really short and sharp. If there are less harmonic activity, which means that it's still more of a uh, flattened surface, but if it's a short and sharp impact, that will tend to generate a lot of harmonics, and that's what we can see. Now let's look into that time waveform to make sure what we're seeing in the spectrum is a real event as well. Then we look into the time waveform uh, and we can see that the impacting in the time waveform is repetitive. We can see the gap between the two consecutive impact is linking to this particular frequency on the outer edge of the bearing. So what we've seen there is absolutely real and we can see in the time waveform we can see the impacting and the, the gap between two consecutive impact is quite constant, which indicates and gets us to the level that certainly there is a damage on the raceway inside the uh, tronial bearing. Now, I've got the last basically slide, which is more for performance dashboard. And the reason I wanted to put this one in, it's again, the idea here is that when we basically look into more of an online system, surely we've got the vibration data, we've got the process data, we've got the gap monitoring, we've got temperature data. But for our internal stakeholders to understand, it's very important that we monitor the performance health of the asset. And the best way is create a dashboard, make it presentable, so that it's very much communicative instead of basically going through uh, the hard copy reports and stuff like that. So on that point, I will basically stop and I will pass it back to a uh, coordinator to, and, and we kind of go through some questions now. <laughs>